Why you just got acetic acid on me? Dude, that's just vinegar. Oh. Weird. Welcome back to How To's. This is a channel where we teach you how to do stuff. Today we're continuing with chemistry. We're learning about acids and bases. You guys remember that one scene from Fight Club? You know what I'm talking about, right? If you don't, look it up. This is your first challenge of the video. Tell me, did he get burned with acid or base? So before we can learn about the differences between acids and bases, we need to know how we classify them and what defines an acid versus a base. There are two main ways to do this. Either you use the pH scale, which is from 0 to 14, to determine if something is an acid or something is a base, or you use the Bronsted-Lowry theory, which focuses less on pH, but more on how a proton is transferred, whether it's accepted or it's donated. So let's talk about the pH scale first. Have you ever wondered what the letters P and H stand for? It stands for potential hydrogen. It's because when we talk about acids and bases, we talk about the transfer of protons. And in this case, it's an H plus or a hydrogen. On the pH scale, your pH can range from zero all the way up to 14. The lower the number, the more acidic a substance is, and the higher the number, the more basic it is. You know, like a valley girl. Another way to look at it is if you're less than seven, you're acidic, and if you're more than seven, you're basic. But if you're right around that seven mark, you're known as neutral or like water. Fun fact, water is actually known as the most acidic and the most basic substance in the world. This is why water is so unique, because it sits around a pH level of seven. It's known as what's called an amphoteric substance, which means it can act as an acid or a base sometimes. Water can either lose a proton and become a hydroxide ion, or it can gain a proton and become a hydronium ion. Is it just me, or does that kind of sound like a Pokemon or maybe even an X-Men character? Wolverine, Cyclops, Hydronium! In order to test the pH of a substance to figure out if it's acidic or if it's basic, you can use something called litmus paper or even something called a universal indicator. If any of you have pools or jacuzzis at home, your parents probably actually have some litmus paper at home because you need to keep track of the water in your pools and figure out if they're too basic or too acidic and make sure you balance it so it's safe to swim in. For the most part from what you've learned, acids typically will release a proton or an H plus and bases will typically release a hydroxide ion or an OH minus, but this isn't always true. If you take ammonia Ammonia, for example, mixed with water, ammonia is actually the base in this case. But ammonia can't give off any hydroxides because it doesn't have any oxygens. So how does that work? In the example shown, ammonia acts as the base in this reaction and water acts as the acid. And when the reaction proceeds, ammonia becomes ammonium, gaining a proton, and then water becomes hydroxide losing a proton. This is why we consider the Bronsted-Lowry theory. Because in this case, we focus more on the protons and the gaining and releasing of protons to consider something an acid or a base, rather than dealing with hydroxides. In this next example, when we mix a strong acid like hydrochloric acid with water, this time water instead acts as a base. And if you look at the reaction proceeding, we see that we get a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. All right, so I think we've reached the point where we can now define what an acid is and what a base is and really get into it. Some fun facts about acids. They have a pH of less than seven. Some typical facts about acid is that they're sour and they can corrode metal. But just because an acid is sour doesn't mean go taste it. I'll let me some Sour Patch Kids, but I still got common sense. Some typical things that are known as acids that you may know of are citrus fruits like lemons, limes, oranges, grapefruits, or even typical things like vinegar, also known as acetic acid, headache medicine like aspirin, soft drinks with carbonic acid, even even things like proteins, which are made up of amino acids. And the big one you should of course know about, your stomach acid. Oh, that hydrochloric acid can burn coming up your throat when you're throwing up. You know what I'm saying? Now on the other hand, we have bases. Bases have a pH of more than seven, up to 14, and the higher the number, the stronger the base. Typically bases taste bitter and have a slippery feeling. Pause right here. Can you name a base? The most common example, slippery and bitter, soaps. Have you ever taken a shower and gotten soap in your mouth and been like, oh, oh that tastes terrible? Bitter, you know what I mean? That's why I hate coffee. Along with things like soap, you have deodorants or detergents, laxatives, baking soda, bleach, even blood. If you've ever tasted blood, yeah, it's got that kind of iron, metally, bitter taste to it. The building block of you in DNA, that's made of bases. The A's, the T's, the G's, and the C's. Okay, let's go all the way back to the beginning of the video when we talked about Fight Club. You know what I'm saying? Fight Club. In that movie, Edward Norton gets something poured on him and it's burning his skin. And what does Brad Pitt do? He doesn't take water and put it on it. He takes the opposite substance to counteract it. Because what's cool about acids versus bases is that they can neutralize each other. In Fight Club, base was poured on his hand and acid was used to counteract it. If this video is helpful to you, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with someone that might need some more help with acids and bases. Make sure you never stop learning.